I'm doing the warping program. Take your 
cost off the grid and go solar, the first thing you need to do is go conservative. So that would mean uh, first thing, get your hot water from the sun, which is easy to do. Hawaii has the biggest percentage of houses with hot water solar. And by the way, when people say solar, they may mean hot water solar, or they may mean photovoltaic solar, which produces energy. So I'll try not to be confusing that with those words. And mostly I'll talk about power today. Although Jerry Bickle's going to demonstrate his solar thermal power dryer, and we brought a uh, bunch of bananas, and he's drying those in a solar power dryer on a day with a lot of overcast. So they may taste a lot more like bananas than dried bananas when we get a chance. Oh, how's it sound? Same, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Flowers don't get the video. Well, this is for the video. Oh. The, the mic. No, there's no amplification, just mic. Big mouth. Oh. Amplification device. Good acoustics. Oh. <laughs> so, these are the solar panels that you see around. And uh, this one is monocrystalline. You can see each one is a little cell. It costs a little more than the polycrystalline, which are little chips. However, the polycrystalline are really a lot prettier. So if you're going for a tractor, I mean, these things will be on your house. I really like the way the polycrystalline look when the sun hits them. They kind of glitter and gleam. Uh, string ribbon is one that's made in the East Coast in America. And it's a little newer technology, maybe a little bit better, and competitive in pricing. Most of the solar panels on the market now are now made in China. China is doing a rural electrification, and they're producing thousands of new solar panels all the time and making huge factories for them, so they're a driving force. Whether or not Chinese solar panels are really going to last as long as the ones that we know and love that we've tested for 20 or 30 years remains to be seen, but they look pretty good to me, the one I've seen, and they are a little bit cheaper. So, you start with this one little photovoltaic cell, and it just puts out a little bit of power. So in order to make them usable, they're put into this, which is called a solar panel, or a solar module. And a solar panel, now, they can be made if they're 12 volt of 33 or 36 solar, solar cells. Now, only the 36 solar cells are really suitable for tropical use. And that's because when the sun hits a solar panel, it heats it up. They're black. They get hot in the sun. And that lowers the voltage. So the, if you're shopping for a solar panel, don't be fooled when you find one with 33 for 12 volts. So a lot of the panels now are 24 volts. So that would be 66. Or it would be 72 for tropical use. So if you're looking at monocrystalline panels, you might want to get ones that are 72 if they happen to be 24 volt. You know what I mean? Uh, because if you get the ones that are lower voltage, when they heat up, they'll be lower yet. Now, today's charge controllers can deal with this a lot better than in the old days. So it's not as crucial as it once was. Little panels are about a foot wide and four feet high. And these panels were available maybe from 1960 to 1975, and they produced 50 watts, and they were the standard. Nowadays, the panels are much bigger, you know, about five feet high and maybe three feet wide, and they put out, the newest one is 240 watts. I had to change my show because last time I did it, it was 230 watts. So they continually make bigger, more powerful panels. They also seem to be making them lighter and cheaper as they go, too. So uh, they are tested to handle hail, and the glass is tempered and pretty tough. So they're, they're pretty well made. OK, so you've got a module here, but you need to make an array like this in order to really use the solar panels. Now, did you say that they, the panels heat up? Is that why they separate them from the roof with, on a, yes. some kind of a rack? Yeah. The, the panels should stay as cool as possible, so when they're mounted, you always need an air gap if you're on a roof underneath them. And uh, an inch to three inches is typical uh, with a with mounted uh, They have something called a hanger bolt that has um, screw threads on one side that can go into the roof beam. And then they have bolt threads sticking up, and they, they might be long, so that you can then put a nut in a washer and, and mount your, your I'll show you how you mount racks. Now. 